What's up, Cal Gang? Welcome back to some mechanics and materials. So let's go ahead and solve this problem. So I just solved 5.54, which is very similar. We found the angle of twist of D. Now we're trying to find the angle of twist of C. So go check out that video if you haven't already. So let's go. So we have this A36 steel, which modulus of um, rigidity of 30, 75 GPA. Now the diameter is how we're given. So we know that diameter from A to C of this outer rod is 40 millimeters with a thickness of five millimeters. Then it's connected at B to this thinner rod, uh, which goes all the way out here. And then there's these two torques acting. One of them is going counterclockwise, one of them is going clockwise. And again, we're finding the angle of twist of C. So to use that, we're going to use the angle of twist formula. We're going to sum up TL over JG, right? Torque times length over uh, polar moment of inertia times modulus of rigidity. So what do we need to find? Well, let's start with the first uh, thing here, torque. We need to find the torque in each section. And also, what sections are going to be adding to this? So first of all, let's find the torque in section AB. Because we know that if AB gets twisted, that's going to also contribute to the twist at C. So AB, we have to add that in our twist formula. So AB has these two torques acting on it. It has a 60 newton meter torque acting counterclockwise, and then it has this 150 newton meter torque acting clockwise. And so they're both contributing to AB because it's connected at B. Both of them are connected at B. So of course that's going to make the torque in AB have an effect. So to do that, we're going to add them up. So let's make the counterclockwise direction positive. So in AB, it's going to be positive 60 minus 150. So let's write that out. Torque AB is equal to positive 60. But then this 150 is going the other way. So we're going to subtract 150. And to get that, that is equal to negative 90 Newton meters. So then we're finding the angle of twist of C. So if we look at rod BD, right, this thin rod, if that gets twisted, it doesn't make a difference on what happens at C. So we're not going to worry about B uh, BD, only the torque that gets applied at the end of it. But anyway, the only torque acting on BC now is this 150 Newton meter force going clockwise. So the torque in BC is not going to have anything to do with this torque, because this only affects AB, which we already accounted for. So we're going to look at the torque in BC. And of course, it's just going to be equal to that torque getting applied at C which is going to be a negative 150 newton meters. Because he said that negative is going clockwise. It doesn't really matter which way you make it go. As long as they're both negative or both positive, they have to be, you have to pick a direction for positive and negative. So then what's left? All we need to do is find the polar moment of inertia, and then we can plug everything into our equation. So polar moment of inertia, right, the equation, is equal to pi over two uh, radius to the fourth. That being said, though, we have a hollow, we have a hollow rod. Right from A to C, which A, B, and B, C, they're both the same cross-section. It's a hollow rod, right? It's 40 millimeter diameter, but it has a thickness of 5 millimeters. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that outer radius, 0 0.020, right? Raise it to the fourth. Then we're going to subtract it from the inner radius. Now, because the thickness is 5 millimeters, the inner radius is just going to be this minus 5. So 0 0.015 to the fourth. All right, so plug this into your calculator you get to 1.718 times 10 to the negative seventh meters to the fourth. So then we can go ahead and plug everything into our equation. So we're gonna add this up for each part. So first of all, let, we can maybe factor out something here. We know that they both have the same uh, polar moment of inertia and that they're gonna have the same modulus of rigidity. So we can factor out a JG. So let's put in the J, 1.718 times 10 to the negative seventh. And then G is at 75 GPA. We need to multiply it by 10 to the 9th to get just pascals instead of gigapascals. All right, let me make this look a little better. One. Okay, I know my equation's going sideways. I'm sorry, I can't handle it. All right, so then we have to sum up the top, which is torque times length. So we know that we're doing A, B, and B, C, so let's start with A, B. We know that its torque is negative 90 and its length is 0.4 meters. Then we're going to add it to the next one. So this next one, BC, has a torque of negative 150 and a length of 0.1 meters. So you're going to get a negative number here. However, the angle of twist, it doesn't really matter if it's negative or positive. It just wants to see how much does it actually get twisted. So, like this end, you get 0 0.00 three, nine, six radians. 
Now we don't want it in radians, we want it in degrees, so we're going to convert from this to degrees. So this is going to be multiplying by 180 degrees over pi to get from degrees to radians. We get 0 0.227 degrees. And that's our final answer. So yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any troubles, feel free to check out the previous video where I went over this in a little bit more detail. Check out my playlist where I have a whole bunch of uh, problems very similar to angle of twist and torque. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.